In this video, we talk about our border crossing into Canada, the possibility of selling our boat, and our ongoing adjustment to land life back in Nova Scotia as we ride out this year's hurricane season. Last time on Sailing Balachandra, we hauled Balachandra out of the water, then traveled back to Canada by U-Haul and we talked to some engineers who are developing new marine solar panels. If you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Noelle. And I'm Dan. And we're Sailing Bella Chandra. We are currently in Nova Scotia, Canada, just hanging out, trying to get back on our feet after our big adventure down in the Caribbean. Yeah, that's right. Bella Chandra is on the heart in Jacksonville, Florida still and we'll be returning to it eventually. Yeah, it's due for a big tune-up. So we're back home trying to get back on our feet financially in order to do so. The border of Maine going into New Brunswick, the very first thing that the Border Patrol had said, it wasn't welcome to Canada, it was, I will find you upwards towards a million dollars if you are to break any of the following rules. They took it very seriously. Yeah, that's it, right. But I mean, as Canadians, of course, they're going to welcome us home into Canada as long as we're not doing anything illegal or whatever. Yeah. So as soon as we arrived in Canada, we had to cross the New Brunswick border and then cross the Nova Scotia border into our home province. And once we arrived here at our place of quarantine. We had to self-isolate for two weeks here in Canada and we were called by the government and called by the provincial government so that's two calls and four emails a day <laughs> to check to make sure and that two we were home still... visits yeah and two home visits right but one by an agent and another one by an RCMP officer yeah. uh, and all that just to make sure that we were continuing our quarantine and following the COVID-19 uh, protocols for the, the, the uh, self-isolation uh, so it was no problem and the U-Haul really worked out for us we were able to get it was expensive two grand just for the rental alone not as expensive as buying a car or, uh, you know, and if we had flown in an airplane, it would have been even more because they would have penalized us $2,000 a piece, like once we arrived in the airport and put us in quarantine a hotel that are at our own personal expense. So I think we did the right thing with the U-Haul for sure. Since the boating market is doing so well post COVID-19, like a lot of people, I think, with cruising plans that had been putting it off for a long time, uh, have made that decision to go cruising. And, you know, good on them, that's so cool. But what it's done is created this void in the cruising market of decent cruising boats capable of sailing offshore. And so the market and the value of these boats have gone up and it's turned out that this is a really good time to sell. Now, we don't want to stop sailing by any means, but this might be the right time for us to put the boat on the market and see how well we can do because maybe we could upgrade or whatever. We're going to take a small break from sailing anyway and um, the timing is right. So we're putting the boat on the market just to see what happens. Some of you may have noticed that we had the boat up for sale. Um, it was really just to test the waters. We had heard that the market in uh, boats right now is really, really good. And uh, so we, we threw it up there to see what would happen. We did get some interest, um, but nobody really, you know, came quickly with a, an offer. We didn't really get any offers, which is fine because we never really were serious about selling you know we we're just seeing what would happen maybe if we sold we would upgrade to some other boat you know and uh, maybe an aluminum boat we were looking at different styles and types of boats that are out there but you know all in all Balachander has been really good to us it's been a good home yeah um, it's a solid boat it's <coughs> always performed well and got us through a lot of tight spots and was really comfortable to sail on in the Caribbean. I don't really think we need a different boat. It would have been cool if we sailed it all the way home, but at the same time, it was cheaper for us to leave it in Florida. The monthly cost for it being in the heart in Florida is quite cheaper than here in Nova Scotia. Also, um, I'm kind of glad that we had gone when we had gone because we had quite a few storm systems uh, pass through shortly after us leaving the boat. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that was always in the back of my mind was when we had come down the coast in 2019 from Nova Scotia all the way to Florida, it was quite a trip. Like it was taxing, a little perilous. Uh, we both lost like 30 pounds of weight on that passage and it you know it was probably the roughest sailing we've ever done 
It was a hundred percent the roughest sailing we ever done. Yeah. So the idea of bringing the boat all the way north again and then redoing that trip another time just sounds like an uphill battle. Just thinking about <laughs> it is exhausting. Yeah. The thought of it was exhausting. Yeah. Which we would be doing again if we were to bring the boat back down south one more time. The sail home if we had done it from Florida, it would have gone a lot sm smoother than what we had experienced right. on the way there. Um, the time of year is different, and also we have um, the winds with us, but the Gulf Stream with us. Yeah. Whereas before, we were fighting against all the odds. It's kind of nice to know that the boat is still in a warm place, and if we were to return to the boat and sail it, we would have options, which we don't have here in Nova Scotia. I mean. Here you can sail north towards, you know, the rest of Nova Scotia and into Newfoundland or maybe into Quebec. Uh, but you only have like four months out of the year that are viable sailing months. And two of those months are, you still need a winter jacket. What's bothering me though is I'm, I'm constantly worried about the boat being in Florida with the humidity, the heat, the lightning. everything being closed, all the ports, all the hatches, everything's yeah. closed and it's just a cesspool of like, God knows what's happening well, in there right now and I am <laughs> terrified not. to see what we're going to come back home with. You should have saw what we had done. We bought charcoal, we bought kitty litter, yeah. we, we just googled, googled and we're like let's try it, let's see if it'll yeah. help and we put it everywhere, literally mm. every cabinet, every under the bed, beside the bed, yeah. every inch, even inside the fridge I have kitty litter oh, yeah. and I have charcoal. I'm hoping that when we get back it's not covered in mold. No, there's there's a container of this mold killing chemical that you can buy. It looks like crystals. And uh, someone gave us like a half a bucket of that. So that's sitting in there as well. And it's supposed to taint the air inside the boat and, yeah. and basically kill anything that tries to grow. So there's that as well. So I, I really think that we did the right thing. Um, I think that it's going to survive inside. I'm more worried about lightning right now because there's a lot of... Uh, lightning thunder and lightning storms passing through Florida can have some pretty severe weather this time of year especially around hurricane season uh, but we did have a friend do a little video walk yeah. around the boat the other day and we have a nest uh, forming a pretty large bird nest forming <laughs> underneath our uh, solar yeah. panels right now yeah. so that's cool little we're gonna have a little out of the rain yeah <laughs> yeah that's cute but uh, our friend did a, a video walk around for us and sent us that video and we could see that everything was fine, nothing's missing, everything seems to be intact. Uh, and it's, you know, and it, there was no lightning strikes yet, thank God. Hopefully our gutters are still draining. There's quite a few trees around the shipyard and there's leaves and twigs and whatnot building up on our deck right now. So Dan yeah. tried to jimmy rig it somehow so that water would still flow down, but Yeah, I stuck knows? like these perforated cones in our scupper drains so that if w things were to collect around, the these cones would stick up and the perforation would allow the water to drain. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they're still draining. Yeah. So it's summer here in Nova Scotia and we're very happy to be back and reconnecting with our friends and loved ones after being abroad for 18 months. Wow, it was just an incredible journey. Yeah, we left in October 2019 and when we hauled out in Jacksonville, that was the first time we hauled out since we left. We literally had been in the water and sailing the entire time, living aboard. And uh, I still feel like a live aboard, even because we don't have a place of our own here in Nova Scotia. We're really we're with family and, um, you know, just doing what we can during hurricane season to regroup and, and get ourselves organized. We miss the boat. But the boat does need quite a bit of work and we don't have the financial uh, needs in order to do that work so that we could go back in the water at this moment. So we're just trying to buckle down and find employment. I have an interview on Wednesday I'm really excited about. <laughs> yeah, and I've been taking a few small jobs around uh, to make a little extra money, although I am looking for work as well as Noel with my resume out there. Hopefully something like my last gig that I can actually do from the boat and just continue doing that. 
which would be great. Yeah, ideally, if we could both find um, jobs, work from home jobs, it, it would be the ideal situation for us. So hopefully we're able to collect those funds sooner than later and, you know, give the hall a good cleanup scrub, give it a paint and, you know, make it looking brand new before we splash again. And we need all new rigging. New running rigging and new Dodger Bimini if we can. Or just to replace the glass, you know, just so that we could see more clearly. It's just really fogged up over the years, over the, the sun, the salt, all the conditions, just really giving it a beating and finding it really hard to see in front of us right now. So. It's nice to do some big upgrades, like maybe a hard dodger or something like that, but I mean, that's going to add a lot of time uh, in the refit process between now and when we actually splash again. And I think we're probably more eager to splash again than to turn the boat into a tank. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> splash. I just want to get the bottom all cleaned up and, you know, ready to go back into the water and then just deal with the other stuff down the road. And I just miss having the boat in the water. I miss living aboard. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's our main it. objective for sure is to get the bottom all painted and sanded and and ready to go so this summer we'll probably get aboard a few of our friends vessels and do a little bit of sailing and bring that to you guys so keep checking back on sailing gear especially because i will be posting new videos on that channel this summer but like we've mentioned we've spent the last month or so just getting on our feet and trying to earn some money we should have some more time the rest of the summer to focus on the videos and get some more content out for you guys Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please don't forget to leave us a like or a comment below and also subscribe. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon page, it's always a good time to do so. Patreon's a place where you can give back if you like the videos that we make and you want to support us. Thanks. See you later.